So today we're gonna be talking shit and eating. Oh God, I miss doing these videos. But I'm starving and I made up some quickie little lunch. It's potatoes, fried tofu, rice, and some chicken pot stickers. Yum. But anyways, um, I want to talk about why I moved to a different Airbnb because this really like I cried for like a day, whole day, because I was just like, this is so sad. Maybe I fucked up and this was a mistake. Like I shouldn't have moved. Like I should have just stayed home. And like I started doubting myself. All because of this Airbnb host of a fuckhead. Okay, so let's start off with why did you leave? So if you remember, I love the you know Airbnb that I was staying in. It's not about the apartment. It was about the fucking service, which sucked. And the host was a douchebag, a frat boy from like, I don't know, UCLA probably. But let me show you. I'm starving first. So this was already such a bad idea because I booked this Airbnb during Mercury Retrograde. Of course, Nancy. It's gonna go wrong why on earth did i think this was gonna be a good idea obviously i had to book this airbnb in dubai so that i can come here and stay here also i'm gonna be eating and talking sorry this is like a mukbang i don't know there was some issue with the airbnb where i couldn't see the instructions so i would ask him like hey how am i supposed to enter your apartment and his reply would be read the manual read the manual read the, man read the fucking manual and i'm like i can't find it there's an error in the website it's not your fault it's not my fault but i can't find it and now he's still going off by the way he's still like read the fucking manual you're gonna find it read the manual and i'm like i can't find it read the manual i can't find read the manual this was our conversation for like 20 minutes and i remember telling it to my manager like i think like, i don't know what's going on why does he keep saying the same thing read the manual 10 times and then my manager's like i think it's a robot you're talking to and it's not it's an actual person who's pissing me off and i'm coming from a 17 hour flight and i need like a home to stay in i'm having 10 luggages to designer bags with me like you can just mug me in like four seconds if you wanted to and i need to know like where i'm where i'm at how am i supposed to enter what's the key code to enter the apartment 12 hours before the flight he's pissing me off anyway i let it pass bad fucking idea should have given up already i call him all the way from dubai and of course my credit ran away international call boom my money was gone in like four seconds i call him and it's already a boy like bye it's not a man it's like a, a 16 year old boy easily hi hey what's up and i'm like hi am i speaking to xyz like uh, your apartment like i'm calling you from here i have a flight to catch in 12 hours and i will be in air for 17 hours i'm gonna land i don't have a sim i need you to give me the proper address to your house and how do i enter your house give me the code give me something he's like oh well i can't like trust you like that like i can't just send it to you because like you're a stranger you have to read the manual motherfucker i don't see the manual and then he's like no the manual is there i can see it i'm like show me then send me a screenshot of the manual he doesn't send it like what what is your problem are you why are you making it so hard for somebody who's flying and i'm like i just laugh and i'm like <laughs> You don't want me to stay at your house, do you? And he just pauses. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, have you done this before? Have you run an Airbnb before? Because it looks like you haven't. Am I wrong? And he's like, are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? Yeah. Of course I'm mocking you. He's like, I do this quite often. I've been managing a bunch of Airbnbs. Babe, it doesn't look like you are. Because it just looks like it's your part-time side hobby. Your mom's making you work. I don't get it. I remember being, okay, like, let's be patient and, like, sort this out. Because I paid my money too already too fucking late. I'm trying to be really patient. But you know if you're moving, you're so stressed. You're stressed about your luggage. You're packing. You're moving. You have all your things. And why are you making it so hard? And they contacted Airbnb. And after they contacted, they found out that it was a mistake on their end and not on our ends. And we're fine. So finally, he updates the manual. And I get to see it. Like, after five hours of crying oh by the way this is like when i was in dubai he told me on the phone it's 7832 the street number on the airbnb 7842 on google 7894 and then on text he goes like it's 7732 i'm like what is the fucking street number bruv I, i'm not just walking by my single body i have luggages to carry with me i can't do this on my own please understand my situation you stupid ass frat boy and he goes like oh it's 7832 on the phone and then he texted me and don't kill me it's 7732 don't kill you like you tell me it's not a frat boy like why are you talking to me i'm like your homie whatever i said okay spent about my credit talking to somebody from la my dad's like what the fuck you just blew up like a hundred bucks in my phone i'm like yeah because that guy was so stubborn he would just not tell me how to enter his house I'm like whatever and i can't do anything at this point i have to get in i paid the money non-refundable anyway fast forward i land everything is good i get a new sim i figured my way out inside the apartment i meet my manager he goes like you have to stay here for one month in your airbnb to figure out the legal document visa your you know how you're gonna 
the side, all that. So I said, holy shit, I only booked it for two weeks. Like, yeah, you need to extend it for two more weeks. Call up the Airbnb host. I'm like, hi, I need to book for two more weeks. So online it shows I can book it, but then it blocks me at the end. So what, what's going on? And then he goes like, oh, Airbnb, the website is like under maintenance. So that, that's why you can't book it. But don't worry, since you've told me, since you've told me that you need two more weeks, I'm going to book it right now and I'm going to save your stuff here. So don't worry about it. I said, okay. I tell them, hey, can you extend it to these days? He says, got it on the phone and on the text here, the messages. And I'm like, hey, there's no cleaning supplies in your apartment. How am I supposed to keep the apartment clean? I'm like, I'm walking on dirt, dust, gravel, stones. Like, can I have like a broomstick, a vacuum? He says, it's behind the fridge. It's not behind the fridge. So I call him and I tell him that. No answer. And then he goes like, hey, bad and good news. You're my host. What do you mean good news and bad news? Like, okay. The bad news is the 27th. When you check out, it's not available to extend because it's been booked. By who? If I ask you to book it and you don't, and you book somebody else, and you know how frustrating it is, Jesus Christ. Now I have to move all my luggage down the stairs, find another Airbnb, and you know how Airbnbs are. You can't book one last minute. You have to book like three, two months ahead. And he goes like, the good news is we have other units. Yeah, good news is for you, motherfucker. You have other units? Good for you, because you make money out of me. Who the fuck is going to help me move my baggage? Like, I, I have to do this all alone? Like, no. And in, in the States, we don't have, like, helpers, movers, packers. You have to do everything on yourself. And it doesn't help when you can't even open a jam jar. And he's like, oh, we have both first and second floor. How fucking convenient. How convenient for you, huh? I have to drag my luggage and trolley on the first or the second floor. You guys, first or second floor? No, not ground floor. First, one and two. The flight of stairs here, you, you're gonna be appalled if you see it. And I'm like, wow, didn't I book it with you? Why did you let somebody else book it? And here's the thing, so he goes like, I'm like, can you send me the link over? He never sent me the link to the apartment. Okay, all of this is important, I'll tell you why at the end. And I'm like, I'm willing for to stay for extra three weeks. Can you please cancel that booking? I'll give you more money. Nope, we can, I'm sorry. Totally forgot about this, this is the most crucial part. If you're an Airbnb host and a guest wants to stay with you, you have the option to either accept it or decline it. Okay. He made it go like, oh, they booked it. Sorry, I can't do anything about it. No, babe, they book you, but it's up to you whether you wanna accept that booking or you can decline it. Because guests have reviews too. Like I could be like a three star, my friend could be like a four star, my best friend could be like a seven star on Airbnb. So they look at you and they're like, oh, okay, the reviews are saying good, we can accept the booking. So you have the option to accept the booking or decline it, but you still chose them over me. So you don't fucking like me, like whatever the fuck, no one likes me anyway. That's why it got me really mad because I'm like, we talked though. Like we talked on the phone and you said, okay, I'm gonna book you in. And then you changed your mind last minute for what? And I'm like, there's no broomstick near the fridge. He's like, we'll pass it by tomorrow. I said, okay. He doesn't pass it by tomorrow. And then this is the worst part. I, my friend's like, I think he's rubbing salt on your wound. He goes like, good morning. Your unit is ready for you. The internet info is X, Y, Z. And I'm like, um, wrong contact. He's like, sorry about that. If that isn't the most embarrassing thing ever, you literally don't even know who you're like dealing with or managing. I have done Airbnb a million times. Where it doesn't show any 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 professionalism. Like, I, sorry, but what? Like he got his guests confused. I don't know who the fuck is letting their 10 year old uh, son run an Airbnb. Please let them play with Pokemon cards. And I don't know, Doraemon. I'm like fucking angry right now. But I'm also hungry and I love the food I made. So I'm not really like mad mad. I remember calling my mom and crying. I'm like, mom, I literally can't do this. I'm just like, what? I'm like, I can't move the luggage on my own. Like if you travel alone, you know, girly, it is so hard. It doesn't help. They don't have elevators here. It's all stairs. And I'm like, I struggle so much. It's, I can't do it. Like dad used to help before. My mom's like, no, 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 you're gonna be okay. I love my mom, honestly. She really helped like a lot. Like you don't even understand how sweet my mom is. Like she really calmed me down. She's like, you're kidding me. One bump on down the road and you're like, giving up and i'm like i don't know i just want to fly back i always do that i think it's like an aquarius trait or a woman trait like like 99.9 percent .9 things go good and that one time you, oh did you see how i was struggling did, did you see that i can't open a water bottle i just hope you know i need my, my protein take needs to be really high or i'm gonna get fucked cheers for being a weak fragile woman it's so hard to be me not even done yet. Not even fucking close. Okay, after that, motherfuckers, you know the petty antsy had to come the fuck out. I was like crying on the phone, texting, like on the phone with my mom. Like we're FaceTiming each other. I'm like teared up. She's like, you're crying like someone died. Like you need to calm down. But I'm, I'm emotional sometimes when I'm very weak. I'm weak, vulnerable. I want to kill myself. Anyway, keep going on. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fucking pull a Karen mom. I'm going to be the angry manager. I took my phone out, opened the notes pad, and I start writing a fucking paragraph. I was so 
so heated. I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna look at every corner of this Airbnb and write down a bad review. You know I was gonna do that. Like I have been through too much mentally and it didn't help when he fucking texted me what he was supposed to text the other bitch who was supposed to come in the Airbnb. That was like the last straw for me. And I'm like, you fucking asshole. Like I'm done with your shit. So I was like, I'm gonna fucking ruin his life. So um, anyway, I didn't get the broomstick either, so. Honestly, I don't care. I, I don't mind living in a dirty house, like a dirty hut. You could give me you could give me a little tent and I will be fine. I don't really care about the dirt, okay? I stayed there for a week. How bad could it have been? It's just like a little dusty, but it's fine. But I was like, I'm gonna now pick on everything, motherfucker. So um, the next day, I move out to this beautiful, this Airbnb is so sweet. It's a girl who's managing this and she's so kind, so sweet. One time I told her my internet is so bad. I'm sorry, but what's going on? Sends in a guy, comes in, fixes the Wi-Fi and she's like, I hope you're okay because I don't want you to like be stuck with no Wi-Fi. That's like terrible. And now I'm like, Petty Amcy is gonna make a comeback, okay? I'm like the worst when I'm angry and mad and sad. I'm a terrible person normally, like naturally by default. And then you gave me a reason to, baby, I'm not gonna hold back. So I'm just like waiting for me to get that review page from Airbnb. And a lot of you don't know this, probably if you don't like do Airbnbs a lot, but they can write a review for you and you can write a review on their plate and both the reviews won't be published until you write them a review like i would be like they're a dumb cunt i hate the place and i hate the sofas and chairs and they won't be able to see it unless they write one for me so now airbnb is so evil for this like now you're a little curious to be like hmm what do they write about me like i want to see right and of course i'm living in their house so i have more things to say and complain about versus them for them it's just like oh she's staying in my house like uh, there's nothing going on nothing great you know that's when i was like this is going to be fun so now i'm settled in this house i have like my peace of mind i'm a very happy person now i'm good and then i remember opening up the notes and i'm like you wrote that when you were angry and sad and crying you don't want to have a look at that but i was like i need to i need to have a little peeky look of what i wrote and now he has the fucking balls to text me and he goes like hi nc it was so lovely to host you can we please can we please like write a review on each other it would help me a lot and i'm like hmm your place doesn't have a review yet i will be your first reviewer airbnb hosts love their reviews they they're crying they're so desperate for reviews they need those reviews so they can sell the place more hey aunt it was so lovely to host you of course it was, it was. i'm fucking I'm great fucking the great. fuck i go like motherfucker i'll give you the five star rating you need bitch copy paste exactly what i wrote down in my notes okay I say, super unprofessional. Communication was so off. It sounds like a 12 year old boy is running the unit. I asked to book for a longer stay. They accepted first and changed their minds last minute and booked someone else. Super inconvenient motherfucker. Cons. There's, <laughs> I love how everyone knows you start with pros and you end with cons. My ass is like, nah, -uh, things are different here. We start with cons. Cons. There's almost no kitchen amenities. And this is like, I'm being just very nitpicky and being a bitch because like, I didn't care. I suffered a bit because I cook, like you can see. Um, I cook ev here everything was cooked from scratch like i didn't buy anything so this kitchen is wonderful it has everything so i would like more amenities like am i wrong to ask for more utensils so i'm like there's almost no kitchen amenities and get your own fucking frying pans if you want to stay here the seasonings are expired baby i didn't even i don't even look at things expired i don't care if water is expired i'm still gonna drink it but i was like something is really wonky and smells really odd and i checked the fucking date and it's like how the fuck is salt expired why do you have garlic salt and why is that expired so i'm like the seasonings are expired heating system is terrible remember this footage in my video where i'm like um can you guys ignore that sound it was like brrr, it was like an indian railway station like why the fuck is your apartment having a loud heating system sorry guys ignore that sound Jesus Christ, but anyway, I was just gonna say, I'm like, the heating system is terrible, the walls are super thin, you can hear your neighbors 24 seven. Super slow Wi-Fi, and the pros are, <laughs> good neighborhood check-in was easy, cause it was. That was my review. So I submit this. Are you ready for what happened next? He submits a review for me. And then his review was, you guys, lovely guest that I would absolutely host again five stars. Why are we lying right now? Why are we lying? I was like cackling, this was the funniest thing ever. But I fucking got my revenge. That's what fucking matters. He messages back to that review. He goes like, we did offer you other units. I can stay on the street if I want to. I it's about how inconvenient. I'm traveling from so far. Everything is just chaotic. You gave me another headache. It's like, how am I supposed to move 12 luggages to your other unit in the first and the second floor? Like literally my worst nightmare. Of course, these idiots don't get it. And of course, he's a 10 year old boy. After how the fuck would he ever understand? So he starts like arguing with me. He's like, oh, we did offer you another solution where you can take another unit, but you declined it. You didn't give me the link. So that's fucked on your part. And this was such a disgusting move from his side. He, I think, contacted the Airbnb 
support they took down my review and they said well it got published first so there was no inappropriate words or anything like that but my Ferrero Rocher chocolate totally forgot about this guy they took the review down and they were like doesn't really provide any anything that's important or doesn't point out anything that would be like valid or important for other people who are looking for apartments and i'm like i literally just said his apartment sucks airbnb the airbnb sucks i don't want anyone to eat like seasoned expired salt that's my sad story because i was really like the pettiest karen i could ever be and he fucked it up for me and i don't know who's who needs to hear this but if you're a mom don't make your fucking dumbass ugly ass son run an airbnb unit there's a lot going on when we move to different airbnbs like we have to get our shit together and i situated the whole apartment with my things i had to pack myself again in a week i have to pack my whole luggage again and move again you know how frustrating that is like i don't think a lot of people understand how frustrating moving and packing is so now in this whole apartment like i've stayed here for at least like three weeks kind of feels like home so now i can like slowly pack myself and move to my new apartment so yeah that was like the most bitchiest story time which 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 went fucking great like it was like a perfect like a thing you would read on reddit and be like yeah fuck yeah you gave him the negative review and you got a positive one like he made a whole case he opened up a whole ticket against me about this but i have an event to go tomorrow to their office purple but we are wearing these really cute so my brand called pe nation oh my god i missed pe i miss pe and this green top so i have to wear this for my tomorrow's event see ya <laughs>